couple thousand years ago, two dudes were like, Hey, that's nice, isn't it? Oh yes, I like that. Should we roll around in it so others can like us more? Oh yeah. That's likely not what happened, but sense do play a big role in our daily lives today. And humans are not the only species that conceal their natural orders, but we are the only animal that does so in order to lure mates, which is unheard of in nature. On this episode of the Poopy Show, we find out why. Being stinky is often crucial for surviving in the animal kingdom. And what we call stink isn't sweat by the way. Now, sweat stink is the waste product from the bacteria that eats our sweat. That's right, you have 39 trillion little bastards living on you rent free and making you stink. And these are stuck on your lashes right now. But don't worry, they're all in some way beneficial. Just like stink. In fact, many species have weaponized the stink. Like skunks who emit directly at your eyes with the intention to blind. Or the dwarf boa, which not only starts emitting the smell of rotting flesh when threatened, but also purposely bursts blood vessels in its nose and mouth in case you're not fully convinced. Yeah, you know for being one of the most feared predators, snakes sure are cowards. Quite a few go straight to playing dead when threatened. I even talked about one before. If you remember, the hognose snake. It's similar to the Cuban boa, but it farts out the I am dead stink instead. There's also this one that hides its scent so well, its predators literally walk over it. Insects do this as well. Ladybugs, for example, emit a stink from their knees to convince predators that they would probably taste awful if they smell awful. I don't know why that's not the same. The ladybugs knees. Because the bees knees literally do nothing. The phrase came from a 1920s funny and stuck around just because it sounded cool. But there is no scientific basis to back up this thing. Your honor, that is not slay, justice for ladybugs. And even animals that can't produce their own fuck off smell have thought of other clever ways to camouflage themselves. Like the California ground squirrel which is known to chew up rattlesnake skin into a paste, then rub it on itself to conceal its own scent. This is called olfactory camouflage. This type of behavior is a defense mechanism but odor is also used for marking territory, attracting partners and attracting prey. This is why there are several types of stink like pheromones, which is stink used for communicating between two members of the same species. In most cases they are, I quote, used for blatant sexual boasting. Then there are allele chemicals, that stink which conveys information between two different species. They are either chiromones, which are beneficial for just the one who smelt it, not the one who dealt it. An example of this is the lactic acid in our sweat that mosquitoes use to track us down no matter how well we hide. And cyanomes, which are beneficial for both the emitter and the receiver. But examples for that are mostly in plant territory. And I'm not too concerned with salads right now. And you're not too concerned with any of this. Because all you're thinking now is, where's the nose? The nose isn't really how we smell. It's specialized cells called olfactory sensory neurons that allow us to process smells. And they could be located in some weird places. For example, lizards have them on the roof of their mouth. And since they can go... <laughs> Like a nose would, they whip air into their mouth using their tongue. And why would they go through all that trouble? Because smell equals information. Humans have evolved to consider scents as good and bad, but it's very generalized because anything that smells like rotten food, which equals poisonous, aka bad, is also bad. While dogs who not only have more sensitive noses don't group scents as good or bad, it's all information. And that's why they can indeed smell fear. Because they can smell how you start sweating, the rapid fear sweat is in fact different to regular I'm too hot sweat and Fido knows. But contrary to popular belief, we're not half bad at recognizing scents either. And here's a fun thing, you don't really know what you smell like on a regular basis due to something that's been dubbed odor fatigue. You're too used to the scent of you, your house and your loved ones, but you're also surprisingly in tune with changes to that scent. Joy Milne at 72 noticed her husband Les's order change to be more woody and musky. He was soon after diagnosed with Parkinson's. And in a study, she recognized the same scent on the shirts of six other Parkinson's patients. Researchers are actually looking into this phenomena and are trying to recognize diseases by the changing smell of the body's natural oils. We may not be able to smell fear, but humans compensate for that to some degree with our brains and superior processing powers. We're the only species that links smell to memory and emotion, going as far as even choosing partners that smell similar to us. And we can also perfume ourselves to attract mates because, hey, you smell different to me, so I don't like you, but I do like sandalwood and citrus because that's what vacations smell like and I love vacations. 
That's why we have scents called Hawaiian Tropic Christmas Cheer Babies. I can explain the last one about as well as I can explain why women's scents are called Floral Heaven Tranquility Candy and men's are called, I don't know, Gorilla Fart Machete Metal. It all plays into our association of certain scents with emotions. So we might not have weaponized those things, at least not to a major scale. Psst. Yeah, that will repel all human females away from my territory. And we might not be able to smell our home river from several kilometers away, but the Yankee Candle industry is worth 1.75 billion. And I'd rather enjoy fresh linen than be able to smell BS like pregnancy and depression. That's about it. Now from the last episode, we had some good entries like Katime, one poopy equal to 0 0.12 Michaels. But I think the winner is one poopy equal to about the length of one poopy video equal to about how long it takes me to take a poop. Congratulations, you win this incredible drawing. Everyone gets to see it, but only you get to have it. And for this episode's question, what is your ideal perfume based on your favorite weird scent? I really love Dettol and Chihuahua years, so my ideal perfume would be something like Baby Dog Surgeon Power Unisex. Of course. And special message to Vanny, I'm so sorry I missed the rat assembly. So you also get this special birthday drawing. Everyone gets to see it again, but only you get to have it. Okay, bye.